Welcome to this week's Decision Desk HQ 2022 election forecasting model, where we use our proprietary model to forecast the outcome this November of every single seat in the House and the Senate of the United States, and of course, which party is going to win the majority in both of these parties. As expected, we're seeing an uptick in race level and generic ballot polling this week especially, and that's leading to shifts in some of these very key races. I'm Dr. Liberty Vittert, Professor of Data Science. Let's dive into this week's model. Overall in the Senate, the outcome remains what it's been for a while, a 50-50 split with Democrats retaining control thanks to the vice president's ability to cast tie-breaking votes. And our model gives that 50-50 split outcome a 63% probability, which is a point up from last week, which is not a lot, but it's up. At the race level, we now have three toss-ups this week, and that's what's been changing. Nevada was our only one last week, but now it's joined by North Carolina, which moves from lean Republican thanks to a series, not just one, but a series of good polls for Democrat Cherry Beasley. Pennsylvania also moves back onto the toss-up list. It's been back and forth a lot after a few weeks as lean Democrat. What's super interesting about Pennsylvania is that Democrat John Fetterman still leads in the DDHQ polling average, but his advantage has shrunk to only 3.7%. So unlike polls in our other two toss-up races, which have had polls favoring each candidate, Republican or Democrat at some point, we have yet to see a poll showing Dr. Oz in the lead, not a single one. All of the movement in this race is due to eroding polling margins for Fetterman. So we'll be keeping a super close watch to see if any polls in the next week or two start to show Dr. Oz with some sort of lead or if it's just eroding for Fetterman. Let's move over to the House. The GOP chances of taking the majority are at 78%, and that's up two points from last week, but it's still super down from the summer's high, which was in the low 90s. That is, though, the first uptick in GOP chances that we've seen in a while after weeks of Democrats chipping away at this GOP huge advantage. So right now our mean seat projection is 229 to 206 in favor or some sort of actual trend for the Republicans. 13 seats are in the toss-up pile this week and beyond that there are 12 seats that lean Democrat and eight seats that lean Republican nationally. So those total of 33 seats form the battleground for the House and tell us how big the party's majority Majority will be come January either Republican or Democrat and you can see the full list of those on our website which we will link below. So that is going to do it for this week. We should start seeing third quarter FEC, how much money they've got in the bank, fundraising reports in the next week. And as that's a very important part of our model, especially in the House, we may start to see some very interesting movement as the coming weeks, especially next week. So if you're enjoying these videos, please give it a like, then subscribe to our channel and make sure to sign up for notifications. That's the little bell button when we post one of these looks at our model or a primary night preview video like we did before or which is coming up on November 8th. If you have any questions you'd like us to address in a future video about our forecast or our model or what data goes into it in general, please just leave in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them. I answer them all the time. I love answering them. So until next week, I'm Dr. Liberty Vittert, Professor of Data Science. Thank you all so much for watching.